it was real easy to set visions and mission and direction to, to go. Because everybody's being paid for it, right? Bingo. <laughs> and it, and it's like if, if, if they're not wanting to follow the direction that I think we should be going, it ends up being, well, I can transfer you to another department or, <laughs> or go look for another job. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the church does not work that way. <laughs> and even though you feel that God may be leading and that's the direction we should be going, um, it's a volunteer organization. Right, right. And so it, uh, but then again, when I think of my own, I, I end up having to remind myself of my own calling and how it took a while that I had the information that sat up here, it was a head knowledge, but until I started feeling it here mm -hmm. in the heart and realizing that uh, what God was doing in my life and that I had to give him my all, um, it, so I just realized where some folks are within their walk and, and someday, we'll catch <laughs> someday. <laughs> someday we'll get there. So my guests today are, are Robert and Michelle Clark. They're a clergy couple. They, they most recently came from North Carolina and they're now serving First Chenango Bridge, First United Methodist in Chenango Bridge and First United Methodist in Green as well as to North Fenton mm -hmm. United Methodist Church mm -hmm. churches. So um, what, what, what do you consider to be one of the hardest things that you've had to deal with in, in ministry? <coughs> oh, goodness. Um, I think the hardest thing for me, like in all areas, is, is dealing with conflict. Right. And mm. in congregations, when you're made up of, of so many different personalities, you, it's bound you're, to happen. Um, but I've learned over the years through experience to uh, how better to handle that conflict, to more or less not take it upon my own shoulders, but right. allow Jesus Christ to handle that mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it always seems to work out better <laughs> when I do that, you know? Um, I can't control all things. And, and right. like I said, I've learned that I don't need to and I don't want to. Um, I just point the way to Christ and usually they work themselves out for themselves, right? They do. Um, but, but still, I mean, it, it must be on occasions, there, there must be, it's hard. I, I, had a, um, I had one of my, when I was an assistant pastor, my, my senior minister said, you know, and I, I would never tell you to do this, but he said <coughs> that in order for you to be in ministry, you have to have a hide like a rhinoceros. And mm. he, but what he, was, what he was trying to tell me is that, you know, you need to, you know, there are things in congregations because they are, because they are the volunteer organization, yeah. you do have have to develop, um, you know, a thick skin because mm -hmm. you are the lightning rod yeah. for a lot of the a lot of the complaints that go on within a church mm -hmm. or a lot of the a lot of the struggles that people go through. Mm -hmm. the, the reason I wouldn't say to be, have a hide like a rhinoceros is because of what you were talking about, Michelle. You know, you need to you need to be to be pliable. You need to be yeah. You need to be open. You need to be empathic. You need to allow, allow Christ to emerge from your life, mm -hmm. so that others, others would understand that. You have to mm -hmm. tell people when you when you when you've been hurt, and you have to be able to work through that hurt, so mm -hmm. that together we can we can be more of a uh, more of what Jesus is calling us to be. Um, so that's got to be that's got to wear on you on occasions, right? <laughs> That's <coughs> why we celebrate Sabbath every week. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. To gain our strength from the, on, the only one who can give us the strength to get through those kinds of things, yeah. right? right? Without, so it's not about me. Right. It's not about Bob. Everything is about Christ and his church. And when we take it upon ourselves, it means we're thinking of ourselves. Our Sabbath is sacred to us. It, it's one of the days that we... We don't schedule anything except the occasional funeral, possibly, <laughs> which, yeah, that's this week. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Those things are acceptable because those are, those are holy things. Those are God-given things. And for me, that it is work, but it's not. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, we try to keep that time for, our, both for ourselves so that we can regenerate as a couple right. and yeah. as a family, but most of all in God. Yeah, and it would seem to me as if, you know, given how harried and 
your, mm -hmm. your schedules are that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maintaining that one day is, a, is probably a really important thing yeah. for you. It that's sure great. is. And that's one of the things we always said is our ground, uh, our boundaries when we come into the various churches and mm -hmm. say, this is our day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you can still call, but you'll probably talk to an answering machine. And mm -hmm. unless it's an emergency, you will not hear back from us. And, and so. your congregations know that you're part of a couple, right? Yes. yes. So they, yes. That, that's yeah. all put out there. But they also wonder, um, it's like when if she had an ice cream social up at their church, and I finally got to go up there that <laughs> evening. And uh, she says, I am actually real. I'm not a figment. <laughs> She's not telling stories about, you know, I, I really do exist. So it's. <laughs> so what, what do you do with that day off? What, what do you guys enjoy doing? Oh, well, there, there's quite a range. Um, we fish. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have a 21-foot Skeeter bass boat. There you go. We, well, when we were down in Georgia, <laughs> we, we, used, we used to tournament fish. Now we don't fish that hard. No, we just no, go for the fun of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, and, the, and it was a wedding present to each other. It was a big part of our lives at, the, at that time. But it's also where we found God and felt the closest. Yeah. So we still have it. We don't get to use it very often, but it's still that connection so of who we are yeah. and where we were when God reached out yeah. and we listened. So yeah. if you're bass fishermen, you must be lure and bait fishermen, right? Catch and just release. lure, Catch just lure, right. all artificial because all artificial. It, it was yeah. regular <laughs> tournaments. Oh uh, yeah. So we used to fish in uh, lakes in Georgia and Alabama and South Carolina. Well, mm -hmm. that's got to be a so. cool thing because there's plenty of lakes up here to fish from. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. we're looking yeah. forward to. In fact, I like I said, I grew up by the Sagandaga Lake, and I'm we can't wait to put the boat back on. That. <laughs> oh, you'll get it out there. There, you'll get it out there for sure. So, yeah. tell me a little bit about your family. <coughs> Well, uh, my family is spread all <laughs> over the U.S. My brother okay. lives out in, my older brother lives out in Colorado. Uh, my sister and her husband lives in, down in Georgia in Savannah. And they're owners of the Tea and Spice Exchange uh, wow. right down in Savannah. And, and it's right by the park, right by Wesley and all that. Uh, very nice to visit. Mm -hmm. And then my youngest sister, she still lives here in New York over by Hyde Park area. Oh, right. So, of course, mine is still here too. My my parents are both deceased, but my yeah. my eldest <coughs> sister and my middle sister live in Gloversville, and my brother and his family are in Ballston Lake, in that area closer to Albany. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, our two eldest children are here. Yeah. And our youngest is in North Carolina. Yep. So. Yeah. And uh, we have four grandsons. Three grandsons. Three grandsons <laughs> and a granddaughter. <laughs> With number five on the way. That's, That's the reason. Was that was why, confused. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number five is on the way. So we're very excited. Yeah. Well, yeah. it must be really important to you to be connected to family, too. If yes, That's it the is. reason that you moved up here. So. It's, yeah, it is yeah. very important. We yeah. haven't had a weekend where one, well, we did have one since we moved back that we hadn't seen one or the other. Uh -huh. Yeah, and now our oldest grandson, who will be 12 next week, is staying with us right now during the summer break and oh nice yeah so it's been wonderful to have him here with us too yeah. well, and, so. it, and it's easier to get back and forth i mean 24 hours of driving to get back down to north carolina and then back up here must have been tough on your family too very yeah. much so it is yeah and, and tough on the driver when you finish doing yeah. that well, trip of course it takes it a while to recover from yeah. it, so. yeah, it it really does, does. <laughs> especially we're not 20 anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah i used to make that trip from ashboro north carolina to uh to horseheads new york where my wife was oh, from wow, oh yeah. wow yeah so i, I know <laughs> very well that that trip yeah. so yeah yeah. yeah, and it's permanently under construction through Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, it always <laughs> is. It is. It's it's uh, it's ironic. Well, even around here. I was just oh yes, say, yeah. Here's yeah. gotten real. Yeah, yeah, you have you have um, you have winter here and you have construction. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so That's it, so true. It just happens all the time that yeah. way. Yeah. So um, we have about you know about thirty seconds left. So yeah. what are what would you consider to be one of your biggest influences in ministry? Actually, the, one of the biggest influences in ministry was that youth leader that I, that I had uh, back in Broad Alban. He was lazy, but like being from a small church, he was involved in, uh, he was both the choir director, youth director, so on. But he actually lived what he preached and taught. And yeah, so. Michelle, for you? It was my pastor at my home church, Sapling Ridge, 
uh, United Methodist Church. His name was Paul Edwards, and he was a student pastor. Helped me discern my call and helped me start upon that path. Well, it's been a great, it's been great having Michelle Clark and, and Robert Clark with us on, on Encounter today. Uh, and again, they're pastors in the United Methodist Church and they just started new calls. So I wanna welcome you to the area. Thank you for, uh, thank you for, uh, for being on Encounter. And for all of you who are our listeners and our viewers, um, I, I hope that you have a great day.